Can anybody hear me? Hello? Anybody there? Something tells me that this live stream didn't go out properly. Can anybody confirm that you're there? All right. Hey, guys. Greetings. So it did go out properly. The YouTube app has been acting strangely recently, and I wasn't sure if it actually uh, went out, but it did. So it's good. Welcome. Hey, Arnold Sanzen. How are you? Everybody's accounted for? Good. Hikaru, hey. Greetings, welcome. It's another smoking hot day in Tokyo. And uh, it's supposed to be 35. What's that in Fahrenheit? Maybe mid 90s or something. And it is not a dry heat. Not a dry heat at all. It's smoking hot, humid, balmy, bleh. You shower and five minutes later you want to shower again. That kind of heat and muck. So, but who's complaining? I'm in an air conditioned car. And we are gonna go out for a little drive. Um, I've got some free time this morning and I'm kind of hankering for a cup of chai. So we're going to kind of meander our way over to Ryo Goku, which I often go to, and uh, get some chai and hang out with you guys a bit. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, as you may have seen in the title of this video, uh, hey, morning PVG, hot town summer in the cities. Um, we're gonna talk about cockroaches. Raise your hand if you abhor cockroaches. I abhor cockroaches. All kinds of bugs. I don't like bugs. And this weather brings out the roaches in a big way. Um, so I did a little digging to get some some information on cockroaches because I they're so disgusting and they they um, just cause a lot of trouble in people's lives but actually they have a, a use they aren't completely useless and disgusting well no we can't we can't take that away from them they're terribly disgusting but they do have a purpose. They are recyclers. And we have a guest along today in the form of somebody else's podcast. It's a short two minute explainer on cockroaches. Before we get into that, I got a little story for you that you guys would probably think is funny. So, I, uh, I use iHerb, which is a, you know, like, a shipping, I, uh, what do you call it, it's like a online food warehouse, basically, where you can buy all kinds of organic and, and uh, stuff like that, organic goods. So I bought some brownie mix, I like to make brownies, and you can see where this is going. So, I, it was, they looked really good too, uh, or the, they're by the brand called uh, King Arthur. So I finally had time to make some last night. And the batter was so good. Oh man, it was just licking the beaters. I bought a really nice KitchenAid mixer. 
you know, the type that has the, like the hook for kneading dough. And also there's another one kind of, uh, I don't know, triangular shaped with just a couple blades so you can mix in nuts and things into your, your mixes. So I, I uh, chopped up some cashews, got a big bag of cashews from our friends, Linda and Don, thank you guys, from Trader Joe's. Bunch of nuts, chopped up nuts. I put in some, some crispy muesli. These are Mac Daddy brownies. And put them in the oven, baked them up. Hey Jason, thanks for joining. Baked everything up and put them out on the counter to cool off. So I'm going about my business in the dining room and I, I mean, this is like 15, 20 minutes after I put them on the counter and I go into the kitchen and something looked a little awry with my freshly baked brownies. And that was the ass end of a cockroach in my brownies. Freshly baked, beautiful, gorgeous, divine brownies. And a disgusting cockroach, he had his head buried in part of the brownies where there was a like a crack. And oh my, it was so disgusting. So, I sneaked up on him to try to get him, and those things are so fast. They're incredibly fast. Uh, and he he caught wind of me, and he hightailed it out of there. And they just he just vaporized. I couldn't find him anymore. He he uh, I think he jumped off the counter and just skittered away as they do. Ugh, it was just disgusting. So. I luckily I did have one brownie. I, I had to put a couple other ones in a a muffin tin, and uh, I I got to one before that guy got to all of them. But I didn't have the heart to throw them away, so I gave them to my neighbor. No, I didn't. I'm kidding. I would never do that. Um, so I put them in a, a box. <laughs> put them in a box, and. I slept on it, and then I, I chucked him this morning. There's just no way, man, because that thing could have, even though he was only in one part of this big flat of brownies, God knows, he he walked over the whole pile of them, and oh, uh, nasty, man. So my, that was my, uh, that was my treat to have last night, and they went into the garbage. Boo. So yeah, really disgusting. But you know, in a way I was flattered because they did smell real good, man. And that cockroach is like, hmm, what does that smell? Something smells real good. And he came out of wherever he's hiding. It's the first time I've seen a cockroach in our house in well over a year. We have roach traps, and uh, yeah, he just like, <laughs> like that Pepe Le Pew, smelling the, the fumes in the air and just kind of floating through. Ooh la la. And he came up and buried himself in my plate of brownies. Disgusting. So, top that. All right. We are near Sengoku Station right now. And it's a beautiful day, as I mentioned, as you can tell with this blue sky. Beautifully hot. And we're just gonna go for a drive here. So I've queued up this uh, this cockroach expert, and he's going to tell us a little bit about cockroaches. So maybe your opinion will change 
mine has slightly. Man, those long antennas. Just there. Uh, so vile, man. Greetings, K12. to the next stop I will uh hey Frank welcome I'll play the uh the cockroach background Conditioning's working very nicely in this car. It's instant. Instantaneous cool air comes out, which is nice. Can't say the same for my motorcycles. That we are near uh, Kasuga. Now we're in Kasuga, which is Tokyo Dome's just up the road a bit. And uh, Frank Watts says he went to Florida in 1968 on a local bus, and a giant cockroach ran down the aisle and got off like it was his stunt. That's funny. 1968, man. Good year. That's my birth year coming up in August to be my next one year older. Aiken's in the house. Hey, Aiken. Thank you the other day for your super chat. I missed it, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, cockroaches, man. I, my other cockroach story is I was in Shimakitazawa here in Tokyo with a friend one summer evening and a flying cockroach flew and hit the back of my head and dropped down my shirt. Yeah, you can imagine, I was screaming like a woman. And my shirt was tucked in to my, my pants. Well, this thing went down my back and into my unders and I'm dancing around trying to get, the, threw, took my shirt off and like unbuttoned my pants and trying to get this thing out and it went down uh, down my pant leg and came out the bottom. It was horrible, man. And it was big. A flying one, just like smacked me in the back of the head down. I was like, what the, oh, what the hell is this? It was, it was a nightmare. Uh, all right. So here is our cockroach lesson. Kids, are you ready? This will probably be just demonetized. But here we go. This moment of science. For a certain species of cockroach, humans make the perfect roommates. Why do cockroaches like living in our houses, and what do they do when they're not bugging us? <laughs> Although most of us think of cockroaches as vermin, yeah. they do have a useful ecological role. Cockroaches are professional recyclers, chowing down just about anything, including dead plants and animals, and animal waste. Their digestive systems are up to the task because they contain bacteria and protozoa that help convert the world's waste into easily absorbed nutrients. Interesting. In the wild, the waste of roaches nourishes growing plants, continuing the cycle. 300 million years ago, the Carboniferous period was the cockroaches' day in the sun, so to speak. The whole earth was swampy and hot, with new plants and animals appearing on the scene, creating lots of roaches to recycle. 
As the Earth's climate changed, becoming colder and drier, cockroaches survived mainly in the tropics. A few hundred million years later, ships full of food and humans set out from the tropics carrying clandestine cockroaches on board. Cockroaches disembarked in ports all over the world, searching for new homes. You might not have compared your house to a carboniferous swamp, but the similarities wouldn't escape a cockroach. There are lots of tasty crumbs littering the floor, a nice warm temperature year-round, and endless crannies to hide in. Yeah. Despite these ideal living conditions, not all wandering cockroaches chose to shack up with humans. Of the 55 species of cockroach in the U.S., only 12 prefer human dwellings. The rest live outside, recycling without bugging us at all. This moment of science comes from... And there you have it. Has your opinion changed about cockroaches? Mine has slightly, but they're still pretty disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Imagine uh, if I'd left those brownies out, which I've done before. I've left baked goods out all night to cool off and I will never do that again. Imagine what's been walking on and pooping on and ugh, nasty. So, um, there you have it. Interesting though, huh? Recyclers, they're recyclers. They eat plants and other dead things and they help the, the whole biodiversity of our earth. So, what? No, 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 no. Frank, isn't this weird? This that is doing, doing that. It's so irritating. It's, I hate Christmas music when it's not Christmas. And I love Frank. May he rest in peace. But come on, I have to figure out how to turn that stupid thing off. Every time I get in this car, it connects to the Bluetooth on my iPhone and starts playing that, that uh, playlist. All respect old blue eyes, but come on, man. How about some, uh, the kinks or something, I don't know. Yeah. Mosquitoes, cockroaches. Nah, I can do without either of them, really. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be turning left up here. Right over here on our right is Tokyo Dome City. You can see this, uh, this thing here. It takes you up, I don't know, 50 meters into the sky and then drops you down. Not my idea of a fun day, but there's some other uh, rides over there as well. All right. So we're near Sweet Obashi. We're gonna cut up here. This will take us to Todai, which is Tokyo University, dead ahead. We'll kind of wiggle our way around over towards um, Jimbocho. It'd be nice if we didn't have this traffic in front of us, but it's not too bad, actually. What is it, almost 11 o'clock, 11.05? We're gonna get past this guy. There was a police motorcycle cop, that was not smart. He didn't uh, see me revving up there.
guys can have a better view. That should be a little better there. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, JD's in New York, Blue Eyes is, <laughs> is uh, giving us a shout out. But I mean, yeah, if it, if it was not, oh, come all ye faithful, you know, if it was more of a fly me to the moon, something like that, I could handle it every time. Some of these uh, turning lanes get confusing and people pull into the wrong lane, which that guy just did. Or maybe I did. Not sure. So Friday in Tokyo. We got a hot weekend coming up. Oh, that's a nice, uh, oh, I can't see it. A nice Lamborghini SUV. You can kind of see it right back here behind me yellow one. It's kind of funky. Here's a uh, motorcycle cop right here on the left. That's got to be a hot day, man. Riding around on a bike all day. Your helmet on. Busting people. line of uh, people over here, people lining up already for a ramen shop. Pretty quiet today. Not a lot going on in this area. We'll, um, we'll take a right up here and take you through Akihabara something a little more exciting. Right ahead is Akihamara. It's a nice view, isn't it? I like this long, straight street. 
nighttime, it's spectacular with all of the the uh, lights and things. All right, we're passing through Akihabara. Akihabara is very quiet. Well, Tokyo is very quiet without all the tourists still. So where's everybody tuning in from? Glasses go. That's weird. South Carolina. Another balmy spot. East Coast of Canada. Yes, Hawaii. Aloha. London. Sydney. Cold and wet. Be nice if you could just snap your fingers and have a change of weather. Maybe that's what heaven is. Germany. Cool. Adelaide, Aiken. Yes, Delta, British Columbia. Yeah, so I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to the States um, in August. So John and I, as you guys know, we're gonna do this this motorcycle ride uh, less than a month away now. It's uh, slated for July 28th. And then I come home from that, the uh, motorcycle RV adventure. I come back and then I go to America one day later. So I've got a day to recuperate um, and pack, and then I head to the States. So I'm, I'll be in um, Portland for three weeks. And uh, right now I'm looking for a camp for my son to do uh, uh, like a week, week long day camp. So I'm looking into that right now and there's, um, there's a fishing one that he seems to be interested in. So we might uh, hook him up with that. And, um, Keep him busy while I uh, catch up with friends and my mom and stuff. Here's a cool little car over here. Take a look at this. It's an old uh, Isuzu. It's an old Isuzu. Tracks. 
So off to our left here, as you can see on this sign up here is uh, Ueno. I need to go to Ueno again. There's, the park is great in the summertime. It's great all the time, but especially summertime. It's a big open park and there's just a good, good vibe there. was not the best lane to be in. Won't be too much longer. We will be in Ryogoku and uh, in the cup of chai. My friend Richard has a new chai drink. Is this light still green? I can't see. Come on, guys. Very good. It's called a chai float. There's like a scoop of vanilla ice cream in it. I don't think I'll be getting that, but just my standard hot chai is my vibe today, my mood. Yeah, a lot of stop and go, guys. Sorry about that. Let's take you out of your cradle and have a look around here. This is cute. What is this? Kyobashi Dori. Kyobashi Street. So you notice this no smoking on the street sign. There's actually some patrol guys that go around looking for people doing that. Japan's getting better with the smoking, the public smoking, but they're still way behind the curve, man. Restaurants, still just openly people smoking. That's really frustrating. So we're on Yasukuni Street. Directly back behind us is the Yasukuni Shrine, which is the, uh, many of you have been there, I'm sure, if you've been to Japan or been to Tokyo. It's the uh, war memorial. A lot of, uh, like, tribute to their, to their war, um, their, uh, what do you call, like, those who had fallen in war, war heroes. So people are always up in arms. The other Asian countries, namely China, South Korea. Um, whenever the sitting prime minister in Japan goes to Yasukuni to pray, there's always protests because of the, you know, the annexation back in World War II of those annexation of those countries. Um, but a cool place to visit nonetheless. Interesting exhibits in the, uh, the museum there. The, uh, some of the, the weapons that were used by the Japanese, like human torpedoes and again, day. It is glorious. It is beautiful blue sky, but hot. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, it's really interesting, unconventional weaponry um like they had these things where there they were a i mean there was suicide there was suicide bombers basically um but they had these bombs on a stick and they would they would have weighted shoes and they would be 
walking on the seabed, not in too deep of water, but you know, when ships were at port, they'd be walking along the seabed with these sticks with a, an explosive device on the end of the stick and they just walk up underneath the boat. Boom. And other like you know, human torpedo, so they could steer the torpedo into a, a target. Things like that. But those, those are on display there in the museum. It's, it's really kind of disturbing but fascinating. All right, we're just crossing over the river right now. Off to the right is a sax, one of John's favorite places. We're rolling into Yogoku now. We're gonna go left up here. Have you counted how many high aces we've been driving behind today? It seems like every other car is one of these dumb box vans blocking your view. I do apologize on their behalf. There goes the Sobu line up ahead, Sobu train. Pulling into Ryogoku station. Let's just hope that Richard's there. Sometimes he is at the Ebisu branch. I know I've taken you guys to Mai Chai numerous times, um, but it's just so good. And when I'm hankering for chai, Mai Chai is the go-to place. And our friend Ramsey's paid for a, a glass of chai. So this one's on him. Another box van. Spike. On our right is Nyogok Station. And we will be circling around up here. Anybody else have a BMW that rattles? I'm really sensitive and OCD when it comes to like no, little noises that cars make. And I noticed the left rear of this thing tends to rattle a little bit when you go over bumps. It's not loud and probably nobody else would even notice it, but I, I'm just insane when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I notice it. So if you have a car, BMW, that rattles, is it normal? Oh, thank you. Heard the narr narration on Japanology Plus. Yeah, I did one of those recently. What's this guy doing? Okay. <laughs> it is 
There is some junk in the trunk, actually. Um, I've got my little kick scooter back there, but that's not what's causing it, I don't think. Ooh, I'm so excited. We're almost there. And we're gonna be really sneaky and park right in front of my chai with the flashers on. Because we'll be sitting right there and keeping keeping an eye on if those uh those mean green guys come by and try to give me a ticket. I will not stand for that. Okay, my chai is open. It appeared, wait a minute. Yeah, it's open. The door is closed, that looks weird. Maybe they're trying to uh, keep the air calm. Inside, here we go. Alright. Okay, my chai is just over on the right. And we're gonna do a U turn up here. <laughs> that was cute. Old Lignol on her bicycle. Well, she's struggling in that thing. All right, we're gonna pull over here on the side. Let these cars go by. And then we're gonna whip it around. fancy. We are just steps away now. Closing in on my chai. Hey, somebody's in my parking spot. Oh, no, he's not. Good. Alright, we made it, kids. And I am going to make your life as comfortable as possible and put you in the gimbal so that we aren't bouncing all over the place. So this building straight ahead here is the Tokyo Edo Museum. And evidently they are doing some renovations right now. Um, so even if you wanted to go in there, you can't, as far as I know. But it's a cool museum. The, all the history of the Edo era in Japan, which ended in the late 1860s. It was the, it spelled the end of the feudal Japan. 
but they have the old uh, some examples of old buildings and uh, like the, the Edo era houses and and really interesting artwork and all kinds of stuff really cool all right hey JD I think we have a spammer here you show him in show him to the back door unless of course you guys are into uh, naked tinder stuff uh, all right we are in the gimbal maybe wait a minute let's go this is not working properly is it just a moment just a moment bear with me bear with me kids something went haywire here oh, here we go There we go. Now we should be good. All right, good. Okay, we have made our destination, everybody. Let's go pop in there, and uh, I'm gonna order a drink, and uh, see how things go. mask on. Did I remember to bring a mask? Oh, it's in my pocket. All right, bear with me. in there? Can't tell if he's in there or not. But there's some other customers in there right now, so we'll uh, sit out here for a second. How was the ride? Anybody get car sick? So this is my chai. Many of you have been here before via the streams and Instagram and other things. Hey there. That's Ayako in there. This is the best chai ever. And uh, the pop. But they've also got these crawfles, which are outstanding. So order one of those too. Richard, you do. いないきょ。今日1時、1時半ぐらいかな。あ、そっか、なるほどね。はい、どうも。Bummer. Yeah, Richard's not here till later. That sucks. That's all right. It's not going to stop us from getting a chai and some and a crawfish, so. Uh Let me put on my mask and we'll pop in there. I'll show you the uh I'll show you the delicious crawfish. Yeah, I thought maybe Richard 
wouldn't be here? I was thinking, man, is he going to be there today? <laughs> yeah, or? he went to open a visa. Oh, uh, okay. So he's, he's going to stay there maybe until 12.30. Okay. Thank you. And the uh, Liu Shu Hi. 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 In my chest, my friend Richard started this this place um, maybe two years ago now, and they've opened recently another branch in Ebisu. So he's maintaining both of those, and that's where he went today. It was to the Ebisu Ebisu branch, but it's a really cool shop, and the food is fantastic. And we'll uh, we'll sit outside in a moment. Parking for Pete, right there. How about that. Saves me a bundle on parking spaces. Or paying to park. Do you want to stay here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only guys. The other day when I was, uh, we went to Kamakura to Hase. I was parked there for hours and uh, what do you think that parking fee cost the 
Okay, I'll tell you. It's 2,800 yen to park there. It's almost like 25 bucks for parking space. That's just, that's the reality of parking in Japan. They charge per 20 minutes generally. So it's about 300 yen, three to 400 yen per 20 minutes. And it does cap out, it maxes, it maxes out depending on If there are 24 hours, there's like a maximum. And I think I paid the maximum because I was there three or four hours. Um, so yeah, not cheap. And, and also if you're in a touristy area or if uh, it's a, a neighborhood with a lot more uh, traffic, a lot more people, it's, it gets more expensive. So it's just the reality of having a car. Motorcycles much easier to park. Obviously. So straight over here is Rio Goku Station. And as I mentioned, Tokyo Edo Museum is here. We're out front of Mai Chai, for those who are just joining. I ordered this and this. Oh, here we are. And there it is. <laughs> Excellent. Let me show you. Oh, there it is. The chai and coffee set. Nice. Thank you. 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 So that's the chai. And this is the quaffle. Yeah. Hey, Jason. There's a lot of, uh, I don't know how we, yeah, report. Okay. We've been spammed by some perverts today. Let's dig into this. There it is. Suede Hightower, hello. Isn't that lovely? Spin it around this way. Let me see if I can sit down here. <laughs> Yeah, the sleaze bots are out in in uh, high fashion today. Just gotta get it the light here. It's really good. See how the glaze glistens. And that glaze is just oh my gosh. This is more than making up for my lost brownies, the cockroach brownies. Take a bite. Mm. Mm. Consistently awesome. What's great about these <clears throat> is there's nothing overpowering. With a lot of sweets, there's 
it's just a lot going on here. It's um, it's not too sweet, and the cardamom is not too strong. Um, it's really a really great balance. Great balance. Mm. All right. And to the chai, to try the chai. The chai as well. It's packed with flavor. Loads of spices and things going on. You, you when you taste it, there's just there's so much going on. It's fantastic. And not too milky. A lot of chais are um, really, really hot milk is the overpowering taste that you get. So let's, um, let's take a look here. So they have an iced chai as well, which actually would have been maybe more to move today. But interestingly, the, the iced chai and the hot chai have very different flavors. Yeah. I mean, it's spicy. It's a spicy chai. But pleasantly spicy. And um, delicious. It's a great, great place to stop in when you're in Rio Goku. Real Goku, of course, is the um, is famous for the sumo, and you can come here for um, the chonko nabe, which is like the traditional food that the sumo wrestlers eat. They eat one meal a day, a giant pot of this nabe, chonko nabe, and you can get that in some of the restaurants around this area as well, which is fun. Uh, there's one actually that has a dohyo in it, the, the sumo uh, ring, the wrestling ring. So you can actually go in it. If you're a man, you can go in it. Yeah, sorry ladies. But there's, they're very strict about the traditions of sumo. And women cannot even go in, step into the sumo ring. Um, so it's, it's a tradition that they, they, they enforce religiously here um, and that includes at this restaurant where they have the, the ring um, they do not allow people to go in there women to go in there even to take pictures it's, it's kind of stupid but you can find that down down this area there's a few restaurants there's another one around the corner and uh, yeah it's just it's a fun little neighborhood not far from Asakusa, and uh, as always, great food, great little shops, and never a dull moment. So, there you have it. Thanks for joining me today for the short drive, kind of long drive, but to uh, feel go food and having chai with me. Thanks so much. And check out the Homicide Inc. podcast, as Jason mentioned. Thank you, Jason. Uh, it's my weekly true crime podcast on, as it is now, every Tuesday I upload an episode. So um, it's a, a weekly compelling true crime worth checking out. Great listen. And uh, thanks always for hanging out. John will be back in about a week, I think. And uh, in the meantime, if, uh, time allows, I will take you out to some other places here in Tokyo in this heat. All right. See you guys. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Looking for the green guys and some other things.
Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ike. Ciao, guys.